delighted to say my second guest has arrived, David uh, Meller. Good morning, David. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Now then, you're here to celebrate the Preston Guild with us. Tell me, uh, first of all, as a poet, where your venues are. Right, they're, they're actually, just pass the nose over there, <laughs> they're actually, um, I'll be at Friday today at the Adelphi pub from 7 till 8, and then Saturday the 1st of September, 7 till 8 at the Adelphi pub, and then Sunday on the 2nd of September at the Angel pub. Um, and entry is just three pounds on from seven till eight, and I look forward to anybody who wants to come down. Now uh, you have an what do you call it? An anthology of your work here, yeah. um, and it's called What a Catch. And you've also got me a CD, which I have now got uh, on the tr- uh, to play. Um, so we're going to have a, a little uh, recital and our first one is Get Set Go. Tell me about why you wrote this. I wrote this, I suppose, um, before the Olympics and uh, I just thought to have the idea of, um, you know, that I should be active and everything and then basically, you know, I'm not really, you know. Hmm. Um, and it basically sort of, it then sort of started to change ideas and about how... Um, like somebody whizzing round the town centre and, and seeing what's happening nowadays. So it's, play, it's a play on words, really. So, should we listen to it? Thank you very much, I appreciate it's it. It's called uh, Get Set Go by David Meller. Get Set Go. On your marks, get ready and go back to bed. The world can just speed off, gather momentum, keep pace. I'll just watch from the duvet, it's the safest place. Full speed ahead, whiz around another tower block. No noise, sense or touch. Keep the windows firmly locked. Keep the cat close by my side. Until finally the day hits Gredlock. And I can see the drunkards round the bend and hear the domestic thud, thud. See the kids rip up the playground and a can of strong lager is tipped over my fence. On your marks, get ready and go. Yes, makes you think that. It's lovely. Now then, David, um, before we uh, choose your second uh, uh, poem, which was your second one going to be? Uh, Street scene. Street scene. I want to please uh, say uh, this, my favourite. I've been reading these poems uh, while, while the music's been playing. There's one that really struck me. It's called Alone. And uh, it really makes you think and brings um, a lump to your throat, I think. I used to buy toilet paper for four now, just for one. So I get the two pack and half loaf and a small pack of marge. Open the door of my one bedroom flat, make a cup of tea for one. Listen to songs by people missing someone. Make my single bed. Turn round to see no one. Wake up. Kiss no one. Goodbye. Shed tears that no one will see. Come back at night. Climb the stone stair. Open the door. Turn on the light. And imagine you are there lovely now tell me about the second thank you very one. much for that <laughs> that was well I, I don't think I could do anything better myself actually I thought that was now yeah. then what's the second one we've got um, for us? the third one the third one yeah. is basically uh, yeah the street scene um, this is basically um, about a street where I live near Liscard which is over in, uh, on the Wirral and the street has changed and this is actually me walking down the street following what I'm seeing that's a tanning studio that's a hairdresser's empty shop empty shop empty shop that's a smoke free weather spoons that's a closed pub that's a closed pub that's a closed pub that's a couple strapped for cash. That's a family next door whose gyro couldn't last. That's a fake tan. That's a discarded chip paper. That's another fake tan. 
that's just the street that's come to its end. Now your next one is about a receptionist. That's now right. I'll be I'll be interested <laughs> in this because yeah. I used to be a receptionist. Oh dear, oh, <laughs> I'm sure not all receptionists <laughs> make uh, make this. Um, right, so we go to number twenty. Okay, do you want me to talk? Um, about, about, Right, so t- talk me through that then. Well, oh, receptionist is, um, I was on holiday in Rhodes in Greece, and every time I used to go down to the receptionist, and I would say, where should we go? Should we go there? And the receptionist would go, yes, yes, that's fine, very nice, very nice. And I knew they weren't listening to me. I could have been saying anything to them, and they would say, yes, it's very nice. <laughs> receptionist. I asked the receptionist whether blah, blah is nice. Oh, yes. Have you been there? Yes, very nice. I asked more. Here? Oh, yes, nice. It's very nice. And death? Yes. Have you been there? Yes. Oh, yes. Very nice. Is that it? <laughs> short and sweet. Right, the, the, right. the, 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 um, the, uh, the shortest uh, poem I know <laughs> is uh, is it's um, uh, knits is the pits. I that's think right. that <laughs> right. I think uh, written by um, uh, that that female yeah. poet. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Now then, what's your last choice out of your book? Um, the last choice out of my book is is one called um, the Sound of Silence. Um, it's one in which I wrote uh, with no idea what I was going to write about, and it's, I suppose it is a little bit about war, um, and I, I let people decide themselves. Really, the sound of silence. I love the sounds of America. It's melting pots spilling onto the streets. Its ability to fly in no-fly zones. Its ability to kill people who have nothing to eat. I love the sounds of America setting souls on fire. Its love of freedom. Its pursuit of pain. All in God's name. I love the sounds of America echoed in Downing Street wherever you go I go whatever you say I say whenever you die I die God bless America land of the free lighting up the world but terrifying me Very profound that one, isn't it? Well, but it's I, the truth. It's what people think, isn't yes, it? Yes, and, and also it was something which um, I, I was the first Gulf War. I saw, you know, shock and awe. Um, and this is no disrespect for our very brave soldiers over there and everything everyone's doing. Mm. It's just that impact when I first saw them images. Um, I just felt a bit terrified, and sometimes it was that period of time. Um, as you said before, every poet and writer has got to write about what's what's inside them at, at, any, at any time. Now then, uh, let's get t- talking about you now. Um, as a young man, what did you do with yourself? Oh well, not I, that I, you're old now. I am. I am. I'm, I'm actually, uh, yeah, I'm very old. <laughs> I, 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 I suppose um, you know, if I go through my whole life, my childhood was reasonably all right. Um, although I did have issues with, with my father, as many people do. Um, I was not the brightest spark on the planet. Uh, left school with almost um, uh, no qualifications, and um, I think writing starts to become a friend. I never read any poetry at all or anything like that, but I started to write in a little book, and then um, it sort of became a friend. Really, I used to carry this book with me all the time. My kids say that, and my kids carry little books with them now as well. You know, yeah, and then. Um, loads of little manual jobs that were going nowhere um and then uh, i went to i started reading i started reading when i was about 20 odd read my first book when i was about 20 and what book was that can well, you remember actually, well do you know the first book i couldn't get get to grips with but then <laughs> i think I, I think i picked up some kind of real classic and i couldn't work out the words mm. and then i think it was uh, uh, a lot about you know lawrence's books you know what i mean oh, yeah. the rainbow and sons and lovers yeah 
and then all sorts of I went to listening to that then I got into classical music and it was like being born again really had the opportunity to do all these things and I went to university yes and, and what did you study at university well uh, first of all I did humanities at Middlesbrough and what does that mean I don't really well, know what that means I know, that sort of thing it was a mixture of everything mm-hmm and um, I always suffered it there because I couldn't spell very well. Mm-hmm. Misspelt youth, as they say. <laughs> and um, so I managed that, to get that, I take it that was before you, there was spell check on the computer. It was. I, I, they, did have, they did have one computer there once and it went on fire. <laughs> uh, maybe because people were using it for the first time. What university was this? That was Middlesbrough. I'm oh. giving them a bad name now. So, no. <laughs> so um, I did that there and that's when I went on stage for the first time. Um, oh, you're an actor, are you? No, well? on stage in the sense of reading my poems. Oh, yeah. And um, I, get, I went on in between these heavy metal bands <laughs> and then my poetry in the middle, and that did. that's where it all started. Oh, and right. it's been like... And then after that, I went to do uh, uh, social work at Durham to, to become a social worker, and that, that's that been the main thing I've been doing, been doing as well. But um, I've been doing more and more performances over the years in Liverpool and in the south and um, do you tend to do these at weekends and in the evenings um I do it all the time I do it locally in Liverpool I do it in Manchester yeah I mainly do like my own sort of um what's it, show I suppose it is yes you know which the the book will be on sale there on the CD yes and also you can see on Melody our YouTube videos of of me live and I think um you know, I don't sort of. Um, I, I'm appreciative if people like what what, what I'm doing. Really, yes, I don't. Yeah. And basically, what people will see on stage is somebody quite. If you like the poems, there you get that. Yes. But I like to talk and in, and interact with people. Yes. And um, you know, and to just give this a great opportunity that the trends um, mm. allow yeah. me to do this. But yeah. uh, and it, also, there'll the be the odd person, the odd person in your audience one day, you will inspire them, and they will think, "I'd like to do something like that." Could do you know I? What? That is what is the best thing in a sense. Before I like to think, I do what what I do, and when somebody comes up to me and says. Um, I like that poem or, or they get moved by it yeah. there is one um, called uh, Shopping List which uh, you see in the book yes uh, I've got that, it here yeah, yeah Shopping List and you know it's a difficult one to to, to, to read you know it's uh, I'm not sure where Shopping List is down there but it's in the book it's and on base, page 26 page 26 and what it is is basically um, do we ever really buy what we need from the shops and this woman was on her own and she was saying about herself um, how she felt that sort of when you go out shopping, it doesn't really satisfy what she needs inside. I don't know whether you want me to read it out or not. Or, yes, please, okay. please do. All right, this is a live one now, not on the CD. Toothpaste, bread, marge, some flour, someone to love me, milk, biscuits, friends. That girl on the train. A dozen eggs. Cheese. Sex. Washing powder. Cornflakes. And you. So that's like shopping, isn't it? Yes, yeah, but it's so true, isn't it? I mean, mean, how many people go around Asda and Morrison's are not interested in it. oh they're picking up the beans and they're knowing what they got next but there's always something at the back of the head else they're thinking about or somebody it or is, there's a lot of retail therapy goes on doesn't it yeah. you know it's um we have somebody missing in, in our lives and we want love so we buy a big bar of chocolate mm. or there's some you know <laughs> or, you know or, or depending if you've had an argument with someone a big box of beer or something you know yeah, and i yeah. think uh I liked, you know, I said before, somebody came in the audience and liked that one. Mm-hmm. And you picked out Alone, which, when you were reading it, I was thinking, oh, yeah, that's the, the, you put a slant on it, which really made me think about yes, that. Yes, well, so everybody's got the, the yeah. can read a poem that's and right. see something different in it. That's right. Come on, read me another one. Okay, um, let's have a look at, uh, the, well, there's one here. I've moved to a, uh, uh, a quite a really... Uh, trying to think uh oh well actually i'm just thinking of this one here i'm just trying to find it uh where's, where's josie 
It's one I did for my daughter, yeah, Josie 38. Sorry to take your time here. <laughs> this is about if you um, if you miss somebody. Yeah. And of course, you know, I've got two kids. Yeah. And um, I don't see the kids as much as I, I want to sometimes. And, yeah. you know, we make decisions in life and things happen. And I wrote this for my youngest daughter. And uh, I did. A, I was a guest poet in Liverpool last night and uh, I read it while my daughter was there. So she was dead chuffed. <laughs> Josie. Today from early morning I was with you. From being woken with early morning dew of tears to a frown that stuck to me like glue hidden behind every word I spoke I miss you. 5.30am you came into my life I carried you in my arms walking past the park in the hours before I woke up I held your little hand in mine and breathed your skin like chloroform. Each passing child's face, each pull on the mother's arm, each father with child in tow, each moment like this echoes back to me. You let her go. Disposed of her in some kind of bin bag, stuck at the back of my mind. Today, from early morning I was with you. Stuck to me like early morning dew, and someone is missing, and it's you. Oh, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Well, uh, welcome to Preston. Yeah. Hope you have a fabulous so time. So do I. People have been so nice yes. so far. And yes. I hope everyone... Yes, you, you'll enjoy it as yeah. well. You'll enjoy all the events. I will uh, be yeah. Them, yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, uh, you're on at the Adelphi pub, everybody, on Friday tonight. That's tonight. It's at seven o'clock until eight. Uh, your entrance fee is only three pounds. And of course, you got a pint as well. <laughs> and there's Saturday, the first of September, the Adelphi pub again. Um, and then on Sunday, a change of venue. And that's at the Angel pub. Uh, there, so everybody knows where that. And I'm just trying to think the name of the road. Oh, I can't remember. Uh, it's just it's just round the back here it's anyway. Preston. It's in Preston, <laughs> not far from Preston <laughs> FM. So at seven p.m. till eight p.m. Yeah. on the three evenings. Yeah, been absolute delight for and you, really, and we will treasure so these poems. Uh, I'll let you, you get these back. Oh, uh, you can keep I it. Shall, no, 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 no. I shall be round and I shall buy them oh, wow. at one of your concerts well, at one of these you. three uh, venues. Lovely thank to you. meet you. Well, okay. See you soon. Okay. Thank you, David Meller. Well, thank you very much.